This video demonstrates modeling of truss bearing using cryoparametric or any other CAD modeling package as the modeling sequence or the procedure or the methodology remains same. This block was being created or this bearing truss or truss bearing was created using the features like extrudes, round and uh, additional datum plane along with three default datum planes and one default coordinate system. Let us proceed with the tutorial. Create a new part file. Pick on new. Under the new file creation, make sure that the part is selected. Cancel the inches default template and enter the name of the file as truss bearing. Make sure that there is no space between the two words. Always two words to be separated by either hyphen or an underscore. The space is not recognized in Creo parametric. Pick on OK. Select the unit system under the new file option as millimeter newton second part solid which is here. Pick on OK. This is the new file which has the name truss bearing underscore zero one. Switch on the default datum planes and pan the space or the datum plane area to the free space over here. The first command which will be used for creating this block is the extrude for making this base platform. Use the command extrude here. Pick on the extrude, pick on the placement, pick on define to define an internal sketch. Select a plane which is highlighted in the message over here. Select this base plane. Under the placement window, pick on sketch. Pick on the sketch view to orient the sketching plane as a 2D plane. Now draw the rectangle which is having the width of 80 millimeters and the height of 60 millimeters. Make this rectangle symmetric about the vertical and the horizontal line. To make the symmetry use the center line vertical and horizontal. Since the vertical center line is not aligning with the vertical reference line, pick on the constraint and use the coincidence constraint. Pick on the center line and pick on this reference line. Center line is now aligned with the reference line because a reference line is a fixed reference to which all the sketch entities will be aligned. Now use the symmetric constraint under the constraints toolbar. Use the symmetric constraints, this point and this point to be symmetric about the vertical center line, this point and this point to be symmetric about the horizontal center line. Observe clearly that the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle along with the necessary constraints and the dimensions it is defined. Select the default orientation and pick on done. Now enter the height of this block to be of 12 millimeters. Observe that under this set or under this extrude feature itself, the elongated holes can be included. To add these holes in the same extrude, pick on the placement, pick on edit. Now pick on the sketch view 
for the 2D orientation, draw two circles. Circle 1 and circle 2. Observe that they are in line with each other and having the equal radius. Draw the tangent line from this end to this end. Similarly, this end to this end. Enter the dimension of this line with respect to the left edge to be 15 millimeters and the center distance between the center holes to be again 15 millimeters and they are placed at a distance of 15 millimeter from the bottom edge. The radius of the circle is 5 means the diameter is 10. Trim the unwanted entities, pick on the trim option here, trim this entity and trim this entity. Observe that it is now covered with a shaded area. The shaded area is going to be extruded as a solid and the unshaded area will be extruded as a cutout. Mirror this elongated hole about the vertical plane so that it will be replicated on the right hand side of the rectangle. Put the window around the rectangle and pick on mirror option here. Pick on the vertical center line. Now check for the default orientation. Switch off the datum planes to observe the geometry or the sketch clearly. Pick on done to complete the sketch. Height of this block is already defined as 12 millimeters. Accept it or say done. Now extrude the cylinder block here. One thing to note here is all the datum planes which lie are at this block itself. We need to have one datum plane which is an offset plane from the base plane the offset distance to be 90 millimeters. Hence, use the datum plane options from the datums toolbar. Pick on the datum plane, select the bottom plane over here. Offset that plane to a distance of 90 millimeters. Pick on done to complete the placement definition of the plane. Note here, the datum plane is recorded in the model tree. Use that datum plane to extrude this cylindrical object. Pick on the extrude here, pick on the placement, pick on define, pick on this plane and select sketch. Pick on the sketch view. Now draw a circle Pick on the circle over here, draw the circle here, which has the diameter of uh, 40 and is placed at a distance of 90 millimeters from the backside edge. Now check for the representation that is default orientation. Pick on done, extrude it in this direction for the height of 40 millimeters. Pick on done. Now create the block which is an L-shaped block which connects the platform and the cylinder. Pick on the extrude command here. Pick on the placement. Pick on define. Select the vertical plane which is passing through the cylinder. Pick on sketch under the placement window. Pick on sketch view. Take the necessary references to construct the geometry. Pick on the reference here. Take the reference of the center axis of the cylinder. Switch on the datum axis for that. Pick on this plane as a reference plane. Pick on this edge as a reference. Pick on this edge as a reference. And similarly, draw the rectangle. 
the rectangle starting from here and it should end here similarly draw the rectangle from here and it should end here delete the segment is here pick on uh, delete segment pick on the segment to delete one extra entity is found over here delete that line not the constraint when there exist two entities or overlapping one another and to select a particular entity right click here outside now pick on the area where you want to select the entities you will get a list of entities present in the area where you have picked it is highlighting two entities one is a small line another is a big line small line need to be deleted select that line pick on ok and pick on right click pick on delete enter the width of this to be 10 millimeters similarly this height to be 10 millimeters now trim this segment over here pick on the trim pick on trim here pick on sorry pick on trim here and pick on this entity to trim align this edge to this face pick on the coincidence constraint here this edge to be coinciding with this end and specify the dimension for this particular rectangular area it should be placed at a distance of 15 from the top edge 15 millimeters now delete a small segment over here pick on delete entity now the dimensions and the constraints are perfectly defined enter the width of this or make this line and this lines equal to each other pick on the constraints over here equal constraint this should be equal to this once the sketch is completed pick on done check for the default orientation of the model and pick on options symmetric so that the extrude will be extruded symmetrically along the sketching plane this width of the extrude to be 40 millimeters pick on done now extrude a rib which is going to connect the base the L and the cylinder use the extrude command here pick on extrude pick on placement define select the vertical plane which is passing through the cylinder pick on sketch pick on sketch view now take the necessary references pick on reference this end to be referenced and this end to be referenced along with that top edge to be referenced close draw a rectangle which will be starting from here and ending at the base now make use of the edges over here pick on the use edge or the project edge pick on the first entity before that select the chain under the type pick on this end press hold control pick on this end there are two possible options to connect this edge and this edge either it can be connected in this way or pick on next here under the menu to select only this area we are interested in this area so accept it pick on close make corner pick on this line and pick on this line the extension is got eliminated similarly make on this line pick on this line the extra extension got eliminated in this condition check for the isometric projection pick on done extrude it to a symmetric distance of 10 millimeters pick on done to complete the sketch now this model exactly represents the model which is present over here but the rounds and few cutouts are missing pick on the extrude pick on placement pick on define select the top face and pick on sketch 
draw the concentric circle. Concentric circle, pick on this end and draw the circle of diameter which is 20. Pick on done. Under reverse direction, cut the material for through all. Now specify the desired fillets. Pick on the round option here and select this inside edge. Enter the value as 5. Now pick on the sets over here. Pick on the new set. Pick on this top edge. Press hold control. Pick on this top edge. When two edges having the same fillet value, use the control key so that the multiple selection is possible and both the edges will take the same fillet value. Enter the value as 10. Sorry, enter the value as 5 plus 10, 15 should be the fillet value. Pick on done. Now specify the fillet value for this rib. Pick on the round here. Pick on this end for rounding. Enter the fillet value as 70. Pick on done. Now specify the fillet over this side and this side. The radius value is 20 millimeters. Pick on the round here. Pick on this end for rounding. Similarly, pick on this end. Press hold control while doing multiple selection, which are required to take the constant fillet value. Enter the value here as 20. Pick on done. Set the model to the isometric orientation. This is how the truss bearing can be modeled using any of the CAD packages. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos on modeling, please visit the playlist in my channel.